Hello and welcome to Williams TV, which this week we are bringing you from uh, rather chilly, but maybe not quite so chilly as Austin, uh, we're in Grove at the Williams factory in Oxfordshire. And we thought today, given the fact that we're back here at Grove, we'd show you what the team at the factory do to support the team track side. We obviously have a lot of staff track side, we also have a lot of staff back here who support the running of the cars across the whole weekend, no matter where we are in the world. So we thought it'd be a great opportunity to show you what those guys get up to. So we'll uh, head on in and uh, have a look. Let's go. Follow us. So you're coming in here to the main reception area at Williams. You can see our lovely receptionist there, still at work as we count down to five o'clock. If you follow Sophie through here. So we are heading in now to our race operations area. So this is the office where all our engineers that you would normally see trackside are based. Um, so it's a little, little quiet over this side of the office because they're obviously all in Austin. Um, but we're going to head down this way to the guys that are supporting the factory as we go. We'll have to keep our voice down here as well because we've got 10 minutes till the start of everyone. So everyone's very busy at the moment. We can just interrupt here, Adam Carter. If you can just uh, explain Adam a little bit about what goes on in the ops room to support the team track side. Okay, so the ops room here they support the track every session through um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday and the preparation on the Thursday before the event. So there's about 20, um, 20 plus engineers here from vehicle science, from aerodynamics, um, also other engineers around the company come and join during the events to do transcribing etc so um, picking up from other teams radios etc what's happening also the way strategists work from here so there's some race strategists out at the event but some here so they also do all the traffic management when you hear about the drivers getting warnings about blue flags on cool down laps and fast laps etc that's all run from here all well, these guys here so so how you're obviously these guys are communicating with those guys track side yeah. throughout every session. How, how does that work? How easy is it? Is it seamless? Um, yeah, very much so, using a lot of modern technologies. So you see all the guys with headsets on, so they're actually connected into the same intercom system as the guys are using at the track. So everything that's been talked around in the garage um, and the offices at the track, they can pick up here as well directly and they can talk on the same channel and they listen here. Um, on more local communications, they use things like Skype between each other, they use emails. Also, they'll use video conference, etc., as required to go through, and if necessary, just pick up the phone. <laughs> yeah. And how about the wider factory? Because obviously, there's there's not just the guys that are in here that are supporting the sessions. You've got the factory is 24/7. So, in terms of reacting to, you know, if there's an incident on track, how how does that work? Most of the time, the team can work autonomously on themselves out there because they know what they're doing, they run to it. But if there's a problem with the car, if we've had an incident or there's something gone wrong that wasn't expected in terms of all the systems, the specialists around the factory can come down here and they can get with the guys, look through the data, again, use those communication tools, speak to them live and go through it all. So, mm -hmm. really, really important. And we're closing in on 4 o'clock here in the UK, but 11 a.m. out in America. Obviously the time zone for these flyweight races is very different between the factory and track side. Yeah. How do the team here kind of deal with that and what, what do they do ahead of the weekend to kind of get themselves ready for working on those time zones? Pretty much everybody works on a normal time up until say Wednesday and then on going into Thursday they try to flip their time and get on time zone. So everybody here on the actual ops room will work on the time zone as they are at the track so everybody works. Um, together. On so that. I guess for here that's not too unsociable but for Australia I guess that means then that you're all coming in in the middle of the night. Yeah exactly so it's quite difficult for some that to get into <laughs> yeah. it so yeah, I think you just have to grin and bear it and get through it. Yeah so. well thank you for your time we can see the session is getting <laughs> close to starting so we will let you uh, get back to it. Um, we're going to just head over this way because um, we also have somebody else who's in the factory working this weekend. We have uh, our development driver Jamie Chadwick with us. So Jamie, you're not just here to observe the session from the ops room, so just tell us about where you're going to be going in the next five minutes and, and what you do to support the team. Yeah, so I'm going to be sat in the dark room for the next uh, well, next few hours uh, on the simulator. It does sound a bit weird, but yeah, I'm on the simulator. So um, fortunately at Williams, they've got a uh, great simulator facility. So yeah, uh, I mainly do some correlation work between uh, what they're doing at the track and you know what we're able to evaluate here, setups, tyres, aero balance, everything. So yeah, I'm sort of getting more and more used to sort of starting to sort of fit into that role now. So yeah, to be able to sort of cover uh, these next few races is going to be quite exciting. 
and we talked to Adam about the time, time difference from here to America. How do you find that as well, coming in at kind of unsociable hours to, to kind of sit in the simulator, like you say, in the dark room and support the team track side? Yeah, I mean, I guess obviously Austin, it's not horrendous. Um, I'm sure there's a few that are a bit worse of Australia, Japan, but um, I mean, it works. I think these guys are so used to sort of running to sort of very unsociable hours and sort of running on schedules that are so different to, you know, a nine to five normal job. But that's what makes Formula One what it is. And yeah, I think for me, it's kind of a job that I sort of see, see as a job. And yeah, I feel it kind of leads to, you know, bigger things in the future. Yeah, how, how have you found that then? Because we've obviously, we've had you trackside for a few races um, and you've been doing this now for, for almost a full season. How has, how has your role as a development driver here helped your career and helped sort of build what you're doing and planning to do in the future? Yeah, it's a good question because I think it's actually sort of been surprising how much it's helped me. Um, obviously, I think for any young driver to get this kind of experience and this exposure to this level, uh, Formula One teams operate at such a high level. Every time I come in, um, I'm sort of surprised by how much I'm sort of taken in, able to absorb. So when I go back to doing uh, what I'm doing in more junior formula, I'm able to sort of take a bit more knowledge, a bit more experience every time, and yeah, let that help me sort of develop. Um, you know, every time I go back to everything I'm doing. And finally, we've got Robert and Nicholas in the car for FP1. George and Robert back in the car for FP2. And Kota is an incredible circuit. What's it like driving it in the simulator though? I mean, obviously it's not real life, but <laughs> it is amazing. I think I'm glad it's not real life. It's a really tough circuit. Um, I keep saying, even on a simulator, trying to string a lap together, it's not easy at all. The S's are unbelievable. I can imagine in real life that's uh, insane. So yeah, I'm very jealous of them, but yeah, I've got kind of the next best thing being in on the simulator. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, we should probably let you get back to it because like we say, the session is about to start yeah. and we don't want to be holding anyone up from doing their actual jobs. So thank you so <laughs> much. Um, and thank you. We hope you've enjoyed having a little bit of a behind the scenes look at what goes on here and enjoy the track action from Austin.